Scientists have found evidence for the biggest earthquake in human history. Now, this quake was so ruinous that humans fled the area for over 1,000 years. Now, these archaeologists found evidence of the largest known earthquake in human history, a terrifying magnitude 9.5 megaquake that caused a 5,000-mile-long tsunami. That's 8,000 kilometers. And prompted human populations to abandon nearby coastlines for over 1,000 years. Now, the earthquake struck about 3,800 years ago in what is now northern Chile when a tectonic plate Rupture lifted the region's coastline significantly. The subsequent tsunami was so powerful, it created waves as high as 66 feet or 20 meters and traveled all the way to New Zealand, where it hurled car-sized boulders hundreds of miles inland. Now, until now, the largest earthquake ever recorded in human history was the 1960 Valdivia earthquake, which hit southern Chile with a magnitude of 9.4 and 9.6, killing over 6,000 people and sending tsunamis barreling across the Pacific. The rupture that caused the Valdivia earthquake was enormous. It extended for more than 500 miles. But as scientists detail in research published April 6th in the Journal of Science Advances, newly discovered ancient megaquake was even bigger, coming from a rupture 620 miles wide. That's 120 miles longer than the rupture that created a 9.6 in 1960. It had been thought that there could not be an event of that size in the north of the country simply because you could not get a long enough rupture. The study co-author James Goff, a geologist at the University of Southampton in England, said in a statement, Like the Valdivia earthquake, the ancient quake was a megathrust earthquake. Hmm. The most powerful type of earthquake in the world. These earthquakes occur... When one of Earth's tectonic plates gets forced or subducted underneath another, the two plates eventually get locked into place by friction. But the forces that cause the plates to collide continues to build. And eventually, so much strain gathers that the point of contact between the plates rips apart or ruptures. This creation of a gigantic rupture and the release of energy in the form of devastating seismic waves. Now, evidence for this giant quake was found in marine and coastal items, such as littoral deposits, which are boulders, pebbles, and sand native to the coastal regions, as well as marine rocks, shells, and sea life. They found evidence of marine sediments and a lot of creatures that would have been living quietly in the sea before being thrown inland, Geoff said in a statement. And we found all of these very high up and a very long way inland. So it could not have been a storm that put them there. Interesting. To get a better sense of what brought these deposits so far from the sea, the researchers used radiocarbon dating. This method involves measuring the quantities of carbon-14, a radioactive carbon isotope found inside the materials to determine its age. As carbon-14 is everywhere on Earth, deposits easily absorb it when they form. Now, the half-life of carbon-14, or the time it takes for half of it to radioactively decay, is 5,730 years, making it ideal for scientists who want to peer back into the last 50,000 years of history by checking on how much undecayed carbon-14 of a material has. Now, after dating 17 deposits 
across seven separate dig sites over 370 miles of Chile's northern coast. The researchers found that the ages of the out-of-place coastal materials suggest that it had been washed inland some 3,800 years ago, with quite a big plus or minus of 300 years. And we'll get to that in a different podcast. Because around 3,800 years ago, a lot of bad things are happening on Earth. Now, further evidence also came in the form of ancient stone structures that the archaeologists excavated at the site. Now, the stone walls built by humans were found lying beneath the tsunami deposits. And some were laying backwards, pointing towards the sea suggesting that they had been toppled by the strong currents of the tsunami's backwash. The local population there were left with nothing, according to the paper. The archaeological work found that a huge social upheaval followed as communities moved inland beyond the reach of tsunamis. So they were quite smart. Now, all the graphs here on the right show a change in altitude, positive, and distance from the shore. And you can see that all of these communities moved higher and further away from the ocean. It was over 1,000 years before people returned to live at the coast again, which is an amazing length of time, given that these people relied on sea for food. As this is the oldest known discovery in the Southern Hemisphere, of an earthquake and devastating tsunami, literally changing humanity. The researchers are now excited to probe the region further, and they think their research could better inform us of the potential dangers of a future megathrust quake. Now, while this had major impact on the people of Chile, the South Pacific Islands were uninhabited when they took a pummeling from the tsunami 3,800 years ago, Geoff said. But they are all well populated now, and many are popular tourist destinations. So when such an event occurs next time, the consequences will be catastrophic. Unless we are to learn from these findings. And this isn't the only megathrust we have to worry about in Chile. We have a megathrust scenario up in Cascadia. And either one of these could lead to a devastating tsunami. Well, they could literally wipe out huge swaths of population on the coast in a day. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. All links will be below to the paper and everything we discussed tonight. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where you come to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project to learn about what's possible on Earth and what's coming. Become a hero and share this video. Be safe. We love you.